The Jurassic Park Compsognathus is yet another iconic dinosaur from the Jurassic franchise. I mean, they left a lasting impact from their initial introduction in The Lost World when they were they, they pretty much showed that you don't really necessarily have to be a big dinosaur to be absolutely horrifying and be a force to be reckoned with because they showed that by themselves maybe they're a little bit of a pushover but when brought together they're able to group up and take down much larger prey significantly larger than their own body size but while these are incredibly terrifying forces of nature in the jurassic franchise how well do they compare to the real life counterpart are there any differences in the overall design or are they overall similar let's go ahead and take a look at it so to put it extremely simply there's not too many differences in the way of differences i mean when you look at them right next to each other you might assume that there are but when you like really kind of boil down to it when you look at the body shape, it's pretty much there. They do have the same correct body shape, the same correct head shape, um, they have the long necks, and they're roughly the same size. However, I do think that the ones in the movie are a tad bit smaller than they were in real life. I could be wrong about that one though, but I'm pretty sure. No, the primary differences come from just the feathering. Like, Compsognathus was a little feathered dinosaur and it's not portrayed with feathers in the movie, and that's pretty much the extent of it. I mean, it's also shown with pronated wrists, as in they're turning them downwards, in life, Compsognathus would have held them inwards in a clapping motion. But they're shown as being extremely bird-like in the movie, which is really fun. And it's, it's something that they have pushed in the Jurassic franchise a lot since the first movie. And it's really cool to see it more conceptualized in dinosaurs like Compsognathus, like with how they're kind of chirping and hopping around. It's really fun to see. I mean, they even have the little hopping in uh, in Jurassic World Evolution too. It's it's really fun. But one one other thing is that Camp Cretaceous actually confirmed that the movie versions of Compsognathus did have small amounts of venom, which for one thing completely recontextualizes this scene. <laughs> Because now we know that he was he was panicking a lot because the venom was starting to take over it's one of my favorite things that they've made canon in the jurassic franchise and why i think that they used and one of the ways that i think that they used the camp cretaceous in a good way because they added they were able to add a little bit to the lore but this is a jurassic versus accurate video so did Compsognathus have venom in life? Well, there's no evidence for venom in the skull. There's no evidence for anywhere for it to store its venom, and there's no grooves in the teeth where it would inject its venom after the initial bite. Now, of course, I'm sure that many would probably say that maybe it had a lot of bacteria like Komodo dragons do, and the thing is that Komodo dragons actually have venom. They use venom to that acts as like an anticoagulant for anything they bite. As far as bacteria in the saliva goes, that's pretty much true for any animal. If you get bit by anything, there's a chance that, that bite will turn into an infection, and that is no good. So, could a Compsognathus bite you and that would happen in real life? Probably. So yeah, in the way of differences, just no feathers, the presence of venom, and the wrists are the wrong way. Overall, it looks pretty good. Maybe the position of the neck is a little bit off. I'm pretty sure that Compsognathus had a more horizontal neck as a, an opposed to the S-shaped neck that's a lot more reminiscent of a Coelophysis. But all in all, it's a good design and represents the animal very well. Little bonus thing, of course, the compies do show up in the Jurassic Park novel, but the biggest difference is that the ones that show up in the novel are Procompsognathus, which are a different genus that lived in the Triassic period opposed to the Compsognathus that lived in the um, the Jurassic period. Now, Procompsognathus in the novel is pretty much the same as it's portrayed in, in, the, in the movies, although dialed up to 15 as opposed to the 10 of the Compsognathus from the movies. Like, they're shown as being absolutely ruthless. There was never any question about their their possession of venom at all throughout the movie. And, of course, they managed to get to the mainland from the island. So, there's they're, they're pretty cool, all in all. So, yeah, that's completely different from the Compsognathus that is in the movie compared to the pro-Compsognathus that was in the novels. But, yeah, that is the Compsognathus of the Jurassic franchise. Once again, very good representation of the design and another extremely iconic design or creature in general that definitely had a lasting impact and I think is a really fun one to have in the franchise.